my, my. You have your Bible with you this morning. If you're out there listening, if you have the opportunity, go with me to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew, the 16th chapter. A couple of weeks ago now, I quoted a famous preacher, and I'll tell you this at the beginning of the sermon, and you'll realize why we're going in this direction today, because one of the most popular doctrines out there being pushed, false doctrines out there today being pushed from the pulpits, is rooted and grounded in this teaching right here. This is the foundation of what they teach. But Kenneth Copeland, you might have heard of him, made this statement. And I might have, we might have talked about this before, I don't remember exactly. But he said that if Jesus' death on the cross had been enough to atone for sin, if just his dying on the cross was enough, he said that any prophet could have died on the cross if that's all it took. He took it a step farther than that. He said that he himself had he have not had the wisdom or the knowledge of the Word of God like Jesus did, he himself could have done it. And I can't, uh, I don't have to tell you this morning that that got the preacher stirred up in me. Well, this morning we're going to look into the Word of God and find out if Jesus was indeed just another man. You see, their doctrine teaches that Jesus... When he died on the cross of Calvary, died, he did that as just a regular, ordinary man, that anyone could have done that. That they, they teach that the victory was won when he went to hell and was born again. Like you and I are born again today, Jesus had to be born again in hell. Now listen to that. That is the foundational, that is part of the foundation of the teaching of the word of faith doctrine as we know it today. This doctrine. That, that is adhered to by Kenneth Copeland, as I said. Kenneth Hagin, of course, he's already passed on. But he was, he was one of the, I started to say he was the grandfather of it. I'm sure it didn't start with him. He got it from someone. The devil's the grandfather of it. Amen. He's the father of, of the false doctrines. Amen. The word of faith doctrine as we know it today was birthed, not in the church, but in the, in the, in the belly of Satan. And then passed on to the church, grabbed a hold of it, took off because all of this comes down to the power of positive thinking, the power of speech, and we know that the devil himself considered himself higher than God. And man today, some of their doctrine says, you're a little God, I'm a little God. We can command God to do what we want Him to do. We can speak it into existence, existence by speaking whatever we want, and that'll happen. So all of that is the foundation of it. And many, I could name you a whole list of preachers today. That even though when you go to their ministry and you read their tenets of faith, this is not listed. If you question them on this subject, they will not deny it because this is what they teach. They teach that Jesus was just an ordinary man when he died on the cross of Calvary, that anyone else could have done it. But that the victory was won in the depths of hell when Jesus was born again. I got news for you, friend. That is blasphemous doctrine. If it ain't, it's sure, it's sure, uh, it's right along the same lines of blasphemy this morning. The victory was won on the cross of Calvary, and Jesus was not just, he was not just another man. Amen? That song that Brother Tyler just got through singing about the blueprints in his hands. One of the lines in that that always stirs the Holy Ghost up in me is whenever it says that. And as they drove the nails, the gates of hell cried, it's Him. You see, we get a picture, whenever we think about Calvary and we think about the day that He died, we think about there's His cross and there's the thieves on each side of Him and that's it. History paints a different picture of that. Historians say that whenever they crucified people, they did so that there would have been crosses all over that hillside. Not just Jesus and the two thieves that it speaks of, but that that whole entire hillside of Golgotha would be covered with crosses. Of course, it depended upon how many people were set to be executed. But many times, the hillside was almost full of crosses from people that were being executed at the same time. I got news for you. When the spikes were driven into the hands of the thieves, 
the gates of hell did not say it's him. That's right. Whenever the spikes were driven into the, the, the hands of, if there were other crosses there, and listen, even if there wasn't other crosses there on that day, there have been many crosses before. Mm -hmm. There would be many crosses after. Yeah. This was the Romans' uh, torturous death, their execution, mm -hmm. the most excruciating execution that they, that they had for people. So they had crucified many. Mm -hmm. But this would be the first time that the gates of hell would cry as him. Mm -hmm. Many hands had been pierced with spike nails. Many feet had been pierced. Many sides had been pierced. Many men, Brother Sleeves, had been crucified. But never a man like this man because he was more than a man. He was God wrapped up in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Isaiah could not have died for your sins. Elijah could not have died for your sins. Jeremiah could not have died for your sins. David, King David, a man after God's own heart, could not have died for your sins. This lamb, this man, he was set apart. Mm -hmm. yep. Do you remember us talking not long ago about the blood on the doorpost of the mantles in Egypt? Mm -hmm. The Lord told them to, to take them a male lamb out of the flock. Now, there were a lot of lambs. A lot of lambs. But they had to take a specific one. And it had to be exactly right, without spot or, without spot or blemish, mm -hmm. at least in man's eyes. And as far as, he, as, far as what the world could uh, produce mm -hmm. as spotless. It took more than a man to die on the cross of Calvary. Not just any man could do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. As John baptized there in the River Jordan, he had seen many men, mm -hmm. many men come yeah. walking down yeah. that old dusty road. Amen. Mm -hmm. No doubt he had seen good men, yeah. godly men. Mm -hmm. He had seen teachers. Mm -hmm. He had seen maybe even a prophet or two. Yeah. But one day something was different. Mm -hmm. He looked up and he saw not just another man, but somebody that was more than a man. That which had been prophesied of from the beginning of time. He lifts up his eyes and he looks and he says, Behold, not just another man, not just a good teacher, not just a good prophet. Behold, the, the not a, not one of many, yeah. the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. The, that's him. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's him. Mm -hmm. That is him. Mm -hmm. No other. Mm -hmm. No other. Mm -hmm. So for these people to teach that anyone else could have died on the cross if that's all it took shows me they know very little about the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Because from Genesis to the end from Genesis the first chapter to Revelation 22 it don't point to just any man <laughs> oh I could preach this morning amen hallelujah I got the preacher's itch been a little while gotta shake the dust off it didn't just point to any man it pointed to Jesus Christ of Nazareth born of a virgin by the name of Mary not just any good teacher not just any good prophet but God himself in the flesh so we find the disciples here in Matthew, the 16th chapter. Jesus is fixing to ask them a question. The same question He has for you today. This is a question that the answer that you have, Brother Rodney, good to see you come in there, is the most important question you will ever answer. Jesus talking to His disciples. The Bible says in Matthew 16 and 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? You see, if you don't get this right, you miss it. If you don't know who Jesus is, I'm not talking about the historical account of the man. I'm not talking about some book that says he was a prophet. I'm not talking about some book, mama, or some teacher, some preacher, some, some doctrine that says he was a good man, he was a good teacher. 
If you don't know who Jesus is, if you don't have this right, you're going to miss it all. You can't just believe today, well, he was a good man, but nothing else. He was a good prophet, but nothing else. I tell you this much, if you believe he was a good man and you believe he was a good prophet, your view of a good prophet and a good man are different than mine because if you do not believe that he was the one, the Son of God, God in the flesh, then he was the biggest liar that ever stepped foot on planet Earth because that's exactly what he claimed to be. He never said, I'm just a prophet. He never said, I'm just a good teacher. When he spoke to the woman at the well <laughs> about the Messiah to come, and she yeah. said, oh yeah, I know he's coming. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, I that speak to you yeah. am he. That's right. I'm him. Mm -hmm. I'm, here. I'm him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he turns to his disciples and says, who do men say that I am? And their answer was this in verse 14. Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say that you're Elias. Others say that you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. You see, there are many religions today that believe that Jesus was a good man. There are many religions today, many people that will tell you that Jesus was a good teacher, that he was a prophet. Was he a good man? Never a better one. Was he a good prophet? Never a greater one. Was he a good teacher? Oh, so much so that at the age of 12, he baffled the minds of the doctors. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He was a good teacher. He was a good man. He was a good prophet. None better. But he was more than that. Was he more than that, Brother Billy? You better believe it. Amen. Yeah. Now Jesus says to them, okay, I know what men say that I am. And you can answer me that today. If I asked you, if I said, who, who do you believe Jesus is? Who do you say that he is? And your answer might be, well, Mama said that he was the Savior. Well, my pastor said that he's a good teacher. See, his, his disciples had, when he said, who do men say? What do you hear out there? Who do they say that I am? John the Baptist, Elias, Jeremiah, one of the great prophets. Jesus said, okay, but let's get this down where the rubber meets the road. See, I could ask Brother Sleece a lot of questions this morning. I said, Brother Sleece, that, what do you think about Jesus? He could tell me what Sister Minnie said. He could tell me what Brother Ferris said. He could tell me what some of his past pastors had to say. He could tell me what the Baptist church says about it, what the Pentecostal church says about it, but I want to know what he says. And that's what Jesus is asking his disciples. He said unto them in verse 15, He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? I know that there are those that call me a teacher. I know that there are those that call me Elijah and call me Jeremiah and call me one of the great prophets and call me John the Baptist. I know that there are those that call me Beelzebub. I know there are those that call me the son of the devil. I know there are some of those that call me a false teacher. But what about you? Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I, if the Word of faith preachers had have lived in that day. And Jesus had have turned to them and said, Who do you say that I am? Mm -hmm. I wonder if their answer would have been, Well, you're just another man. Mm -hmm. You're going to be greater later on, but right now you're just another man. You can't do any more than Elijah could have done. You can't do any more than Jeremiah could have done. You're just another man. Jesus said, But whom say ye that I am? That's the question for our soul today that's most important. Mm -hmm. Sister Judy Frizzell used to say, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. He's more than a story. He is the King of glory. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. And he asked his disciples, But whom say ye that I am? You see, someone else's faith, that ain't what's going, that's not what you're going to be judged on. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to stand before God. His questions are not going to be, what did this one tell you? What did that one think? His questions are going to be directed to you. What did you believe? Mm -hmm. What did you say? What did you do with this Jesus? Oh, hallelujah. 
Someone else's faith ain't what you're going to be judged on. Who do you say that I am? This is a personal thing. You can't pass it off on, well, the priest. That's his job. He's talked to the priest. I told my sins to him, and he's supposed to take care of it. Well, I feel sorry for you today. If you're out there and you confessed your sins last night or early this morning, you expected a man to go before God and get, and get forgiveness for you. What if he didn't? You see, your salvation, you're going to be able to stand before God and say, well, the priest was supposed to bring my sins before you. He didn't do that. No, because there's only one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Who do you say that I am? It depends upon your faith. The sons of Sceva in the book of Acts had heard about Jesus. That wasn't the question. When they walked up there to try to cast those devils out of them, them men, they said in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, Paul knew mm -hmm. who Jesus was. Paul knew who Jesus was. Peter knew who Jesus was. We'll find that out here in just a minute. The disciples knew who Jesus was. But these men, these Sceva fellows, they had heard about Jesus. They had heard He was a good teacher. They had heard He was a good prophet. They had heard from Paul that in His name you could cast out devils. So they go before these devils and say, in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches. You know what the devil says to them? Jesus I know. And Paul I know. Who are you? Yeah. Amen? Amen? Why did the devil know Paul? Was it because Paul was a great man? He had been a great man before as far as in his, the world's eyes and statue had been. No, it was because Paul knew who Jesus was. Because Jesus had made himself real to the Apostle Paul and he had put his faith in that. He was washed in the blood. Born again. So the devil knew who Paul was. The devil don't know most of the church people today. Amen. If you was to try to, he knows you, but it's more on a personal relationship basis than it is a spiritual one. Because most of the church don't have enough power to cast the devil out of a fly, let alone somebody that's demon possessed. Amen. Jesus, I know Paul, I know, but who are you? The sons of Sceva didn't know who Jesus was. They had heard of him. Many of you out there in the sound of my voice, you don't really know who Jesus was. You've heard of him. You've seen movies about Him. You've heard songs about Him. You've read some books about Him. But you don't really know who Jesus is. And that's what we're talking about today. He was more than a man. Who do you say that I am? Verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, there's Peter. <laughs> the boldness of Peter. said, I tell you who you are. I tell you who I say you are. To me, you're not just another prophet. To me, you're not just Jeremiah, Isaiah, or John the Baptist, or a great teacher, or a great prophet. Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You see, you have to believe this. Because what Peter was saying was, you're the one. You're the one that was prophesied of in the Garden of Eden. You were the one that was prophesied of by the prophet Isaiah. You were the one that was prophesied of by the prophet Jeremiah. You were the one that Elijah, that, that, that uh, the, uh, the, the mantle of Elijah represented. You were the one that the prophets of old talked about. You were the seed that came to bruise the head of the serpent. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Is that what Jesus is to you today? Is He a fire escape? Is He a spare tire in your trunk that you don't use or you don't think about till you have a blowout? Or is He your Savior? Is He your friend? Is He your Lord, your King, and your Master today? Who do you say that Jesus is? The Word of Faith doctor says He's just another man. Anybody could have died. I say to you today, it had to be Him. He was the one that was ordained from the beginning of time, the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, the one that said, Father, I will go and be the sacrifice for mankind. He was more than a man. And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You had to believe this. You have to believe that He was the one that the prophets foretold. 
You have to believe that He was the Lamb of God, not just another man that had to be born again in hell. I don't even know where they got that garbage. Well, I know where they got it. I don't know how they intend to back it up with Scripture. And this is a teaching that's been around a long time. Don't send me no letters or emails saying, well, that's something they said a long time ago. Email them. Call them. Write them. Ask them if they denounce that teaching today. They do not. It is still a part of their foundational doctrine if you ask them. More, Peter said you're more than a man. You're more than a prophet. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus was the one who God, when He spoke to Adam and Eve and said, the seed's coming. He was the seed. It wasn't just a random thing. It wasn't just that, well, I hope a Messiah comes and it was dependent upon, well, maybe He'll be the, the Messiah if He surrenders. Or this guy here could be the Messiah if He would surrender. No. Jesus was born the Messiah. The Savior of the world. All of man's eternity rested on His shoulders and not the shoulders of another man. Out of all of the millions and billions of people that had been born, this was the one. This was the one. He was more than a man. This is the one whom Isaiah prophesied and said they shall call His name Emmanuel. Isaiah would even say He would be born of a virgin. He was more than a man. He had no earthly daddy. <laughs> Amen. Mary became, she came, she became with child after the Holy Ghost had overshadowed her. She didn't know a man in that sense. He was more than a man. He was Emmanuel. And the word Emmanuel does not mean great prophet. It does not mean good teacher. Y'all know what the word Emmanuel means? God with us. That will be His name. God with us. The angel would speak and say, You shall call His name Jesus. He shall save His people from their sin. He was more than a man. He was God in the flesh. He was more than a man when He was the rock in the wilderness. He was more than a man. He was the fourth man in the fire that the king saw with the three Hebrew children. He was the voice that came out of the burning bush on the back side of the desert that said, I am that I am. He was more than a man. Jesus the baby was born of Mary in the stable in Bethlehem. Jesus Christ the Son had always been. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had always been. He came in the form of man, but He had already existed. Mary is not the mother of God. There you go. She's the mother of the man Jesus. She gave birth to that which was conceived of her of the Holy Ghost. But she is not the mother of God. Mary had to accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ or she would have split hell wide open today. Being Jesus' earthly mother did not give her a free pass into heaven and certainly does not make her a mediator for you to go to God. Heard someone this past week sent an email in to Sister Frances on SBN and on her show they read it. Someone said that she prayed to Mary because Mary was mother was Jesus' mother and she knows that she's got some pull with Him in heaven. So, so she prays to Mary and then Mary takes it to Jesus and says, Son, I want you to do this. And I want you to do that. Mary would not have went to heaven had it not been for the same way that you get there. Through Jesus Christ. She didn't give birth to Him and then, well, she's automatically, she automatically gets in. She got in by faith. I told you this before when we preached our cross series. Everyone in heaven that you come in contact with got there one way. Through faith in Jesus Christ. Either before the cross or after. Still the same. By faith. Even Mary. Even Mary, the mother of the earthly man Jesus. The one that gave birth to the baby in Bethlehem. 
That's how she got there. He was more than a man. She was a blessed handmaiden of the Lord, but she was a woman. She was not deity. She is not deity today. Amen? And that's what you do. When you pray to Mary, you put her on the level of deity. When you pray to Paul, you put him on the level of deity. When you pray to any of the dead saints, you are saying they are deity, and none of them are. None of them are able to answer your prayers. St. Michael cannot help you find your lost wallet. Amen? St. Paul cannot help you find favor in the eyes of God. St. Peter will not be waiting at the gate to let you in. That's a Catholic teaching. Because Jesus, the words that He would speak to him and tell him, well, we're going to read here, but don't get ahead of myself. But Peter says, you're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. He was the rock in the wilderness. The Apostle Paul taught that. He was the fourth man in the fire. He was the cloud by day and the fire by night. He was God in the flesh. Wrapped in the robe of an earthly man. He was more than a man. The Bible says, John, the beloved would write in John the first chapter, in the first verse, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was nothing, was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Now, if you drop down to verse 14 in John, the first chapter, it tells you who the Him is that it's talking about. And the Word was made flesh. What Word? The Word that was in the beginning. The Word that was in the beginning, He was with God, and that He was God, and that in Him was life, and that everything that was made was made by Him, that without Him nothing could be made. That Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ, He was more than a man. Do you get the picture today that the Bible teaches us that He was more than a man? He was the Word that was in the beginning with God. He was the Word that was God. He was the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. When He was born in Bethlehem, that was Him putting on His earthly robe of flesh. He had already existed. He stepped down from His place of authority to take on the role of them, the humility of being a man in order to be the sacrifice to be made on Calvary for me and you. He was more than a man. This same John in his last book, the book of Revelation, would record Jesus as the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. The Lamb that had been slain before the foundation of the world. More than a man? You better believe He was more than a man. He was God in the flesh. John 1 and 29, John the Baptist would call Him the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Kenneth Copeland could have come walking down that road and John would not have said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Moses, Abraham, the father of our faith, could have came walking down that road to be baptized and John the Baptist would not have said, Behold, the Lamb of God, because there was only one. Only one. Jesus Christ. He was more than a man. He was the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. When Jesus was baptized in Matthew the third chapter, the 16th and 17th verse, you don't have to go there. You can stay in Matthew 16. We're going back there as we close. Matthew 3 and 16, when Jesus was baptized, the Bible says He went straight way out of the water. This is the first time this had ever happened. This is the only time that this will ever happen. John had baptized hundreds, maybe more than that. He had baptized a good men. He had baptized teachers. He had baptized preachers. He had baptized probably prophets. First time this had ever happened. Last time he would ever see it. When he baptized Jesus, the Bible says he came straight way up out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Of him, Jesus. Amen. And lo, a voice from heaven. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me, word of faith preachers. He was more than a man. Amen? A voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. This is Him. Not another. <laughs> oh, I could preach this morning. Hallelujah. When John the Baptist 
was in prison. He sent his disciples with a question. Now some people say that, some teachers say that John did this for the sake of his disciples because John knew he was going to be beheaded. And he wanted his disciples not to stop the work, not to stop following God and working for God and living for God and their faith in God because He was gone. He wanted them to know that He was not the Messiah. He was just the forerunner. He had taught them that. He said, there's one coming after me. I'm not worthy to unlatch His shoes. Amen? I'll baptize you with water, but He'll come and He'll baptize you with fire. <laughs> I'm just a forerunner. So He could have done this for His disciples. He could have been a little down Himself. Some teachers believe that he was a little discouraged. But either way, he sends his disciples to Jesus. And he says, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? You hear that? You hear that? how that's worded? It wasn't so much that John said, Are you the one or should I look for another? He had his disciples say, Do we look for another? John's getting ready to be beheaded. I, I personally believe that it was more for his disciples' sake than it was for his own. I believe he knew. Yeah, he did. That's why he looked up out of the water, water running down in his face, wiped his eyes and said, Oh, <laughs> behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Listen to what Jesus says. Well, he don't answer them at first. He begins to do these works, these mighty miracles in front of them. The Bible says in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that, were, that blind were given back their sight. And then Jesus answers and says to them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see and the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised to the, and to the poor the gospel is preached. Go tell John that. That was his answer to, are you the one or should we look for another? In other words, Jesus said, the proof is in the pudding. Never a man. There, there had probably been, the Bible doesn't record them. Jesus certainly said there would be some after him. No doubt there were some before him that said, I'm the Messiah. I'm the one that you've been looking for. But none of them fulfilled every prophecy of the Old Testament. None of them fit all of the things. None of them left no rock unturned. Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God. The one that was prophesied of. Every prophecy in the Old Testament that talked of the Messiah, Jesus Christ would fulfill. When He raised Lazarus from the dead, He was more than a man. When He rubbed mud in a blind man's eyes and told him to go wash and come back sin, He was more than a man. When He walked in the room with the damsel and said, Arise! and spoke life into that body, He was more than a man. When He walked on the water, He was more than a man. When the disciples were out in the midst of the sea and the storm was raging, and they went and woke Jesus up, and He walked out onto the bow of the ship, and He said, Peace, be still. And the wind stopped, and the waves stopped, and the storm stopped. The disciples sat back and said, What manner of man is this? He was more than a man. He was God in the flesh. There was no need for him to go to hell and be born again. The work that he came to do, he did on the cross of Calvary. And the Bible is very plain about that. Go back with me to Matthew, the 16th chapter. After Peter says to him, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus answers Peter and he says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now the Catholic Church got this wrong. They think that because Jesus was talking to Peter when he made this statement, they believe the church was built on Peter. They said that upon this rock, upon Peter... I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But it wouldn't be long from that. And Peter would deny him three times. Jesus was saying, he was speaking of the statement that Peter made. Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Upon that rock, 
upon this rock, that revelation, that truth, upon Christ, the Son of the living God, I will build my church. That is the foundation. The Bible's plain about that. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the foundation and no other foundation can be laid except Jesus Christ. He is the foundation upon this, rock, upon this rock. And he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. What is he talking about? He's talking about his victory that would be wrought on the cross of Calvary. The gates of hell will not stop the work that I came to do. The gates of hell, though they will rail against me, they will fight against me to try and keep me from the top of Calvary's hill. I will do that which the Father has sent me to do. He would, the, the Apostle Paul would say of him in Colossians, the second chapter, the 14th and 15th verse, <coughs> blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That's where the devil was defeated. That's where sin was defeated. That's where death was defeated. On the cross of Calvary, when he said it is finished, it's that truth that the church is built upon today. It's that truth that your faith must be built upon today. Not faith in Peter. The Catholic Church says that Peter was the first Pope. Popes can't be married. So they've changed their view somehow. Peter had a mother-in-law. So if he had a mother-in-law without a wife, he really got ripped off. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's a good he really got the bad end of the deal. Amen. Because a mother-in-law, that's just one of the things you take with the good that you get, which is your wife. Amen? Mm -hmm. He had a mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. But the popes can't marry And Peter was the first pope. No, Peter was a disciple, a follower, a great preacher. He would preach on the day of Pentecost and thousands would be added to the church. But he was a man. And the church is not built upon a man. Mm -hmm. The church today does not rely upon the pope. Mm -hmm. The church today relies upon Jesus Christ. The church was built is built upon Jesus Christ. The Bible says no other foundation, no other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This Jesus, He was more than a man. He was the promised seed, the Messiah, God in the flesh, Emmanuel. More than a man. When He hung on the cross of Calvary, He was not just a, He wasn't a prophet. Listen to me. When he hung on the cross, okay, let me word it this way. He didn't hang there as a prophet. Was he a prophet? Yes, but being a prophet wasn't good enough. He didn't hang there between heaven and earth and give his blood and his life as a teacher because being a teacher wasn't good enough. He hung there as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He hung there as the promised Messiah mm -hmm. that would come. So to your statement that any man could have died if that's all it took, God help your soul for making that statement because it could not have been just any man. It had to be this man. He didn't hang there just as a man. The thieves were just men, but their death would not atone. Disciples after Jesus would give their life for the gospel, but their death would not atone. Those before Jesus that had died because of the work of God. Look at Jeremiah that was thrown into the dungeon. And Daniel that was thrown to the lions. God spared him, amen. But that's an example of men that were thrown to the wolves, thrown to the lions, that were tortured, that were killed because of their faith in God. None of that blood would atone. He didn't hang there as a man. He hung there as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And he didn't wait till resurrection morning to rip the veil of the temple in half. He ripped the veil of the temple in half when the work was finished when he gave up the ghost on the cross of Calvary. My Lord, he was more than a man. Do we look for another or is this the man? Don't look for nobody else. This is him, Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ. Your answer to that question today is the most important answer you'll ever give. The words of Jesus Himself when He told His followers in John 14 and 6, and I'm closing. And we know this Scripture by heart. We ought to. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus told the woman in John 4 and 26 at the well, He said, I that speak unto thee am He, the Messiah. She said, oh, I know He's going to come. He'll be here. He said, no, you don't understand. I am Him. She'd understand after that. She'd understand after He read her mail. She'd leave her water pot, run into the city and tell all them people, come see a man. <laughs> the Messiah's out there. The Christ. The one that we've heard of. Not just another man. Not just a good teacher or a good prophet. This is Him. This is Him. The gates of hell. When the nails were driven, the gates of hell cried, it's Him. That's Him. That's the one that we tried to stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. He was more than a man. None other like Him. Amen. None other like Him. To this name, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Any prophet's blood would not have done it. Any good teacher's blood would not have done it. It had to be His blood. It had to be His blood. The evidence is in. Read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ and no other mm -hmm. was the sacrifice that atoned for man's sin on the cross of Calvary. He turned to the thief and He said, Today, I'll see you in paradise, son. Ain't no more fighting after this. <laughs> Ain't no more battle after this, Brother Slice. There ain't no war to be fought. If He'd have went to hell, there wouldn't have been no devil, devil there to fight because the devil ain't in hell yet. Read the Bible. Where's He at, Brother Billy? He's on the earth. That's what the Bible says. Seeking. To, he's going to and fro seeking whom he may devour. He ain't been there yet, but he's going. Amen? He's going. Jesus Christ, more than a man, the Son of God that takes away the sin of the world. Someone else this morning has something before we go. Why?